Greetings, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Fresh Bread broadcast. Uh, this is another day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and being glad in it. Uh, I'm blessed today to just uh, be able to be inhaling and exhaling, have my mobility to activate my limbs. My mind is fresh, my mind is sound, my body is healed, and I give God the glory for the great things that he has done. This is the Lord's day. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that he has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Well, welcome to the Fresh Bread Broadcast again. I'm your host, Pastor C.D. Middleton of the Bethlehem Baptist Church here in Middleton, Tennessee. It's a brand new year. It's still early in the year and you still can commit and submit and uh, refocus and reestablish, reboot. And let the Lord give you a different opportunity this year to He's giving you fresh supply of grace and mercy. You can make a fresh start in 2021. And so I just pray and ask in Jesus' name that you just think about your life and what it would be without the grace of God. And that should motivate you to submit to him, submit to his word, and to grow strong and stronger in Jesus Christ. So welcome to the Fresh Bed Broadcast. I'm Pastor C.D. Middleton, the senior pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church in Middleton, Tennessee. If you have your Bible, I want to go into and share another word. Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I want to look at verse 15. And I want to read about six verses of Scripture. Deuteronomy 30. Verse 15 through 20. This is also our communion Sunday, so we'll be observing the Lord's body at the close of this broadcast, collectively and together, as the Lord would have us do it. And so uh, let's, let's have a word of prayer before we get started. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for a fresh supply of grace and your mercy and your compassion. Uh, this is the day that you have made and we are rejoicing and being glad in it. We ask God that you would just pour out your spirit, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Uh, bless our minds. You're not giving us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Uh, it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. And so we pray uh, a fresh supply of fresh feeling, a fresh anointing today of your presence. I pray your blessings go across these airways, your word go across the airways and bless somebody's life. Uh, give us a, a mind to write and divide your word of truth and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Deuteronomy 30 verse 15 through 20 reads like this. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it but if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish, mm. and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou, have, whether thou pass over Jordan to go to possess it. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, 
to Isaac and to Jacob to give them. Let's look at verse 19 again. I call heaven and earth to wreck up this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That's Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 through 20. May the Lord bless the reason here of his word. I, I want to use this colloquial, everyday, in, informal language. Here's my topic. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? God has set before you life and death, good and evil, blessings and cursings. My question this morning, what you gonna do? Brothers and sisters, I lift this million dollar question to, to you this morning. You have witnessed God's miracles. You watch his handiwork unfold right before your very eyes. You've even tasted of his goodness. You know that God is a blesser. You've seen his goodness up close and personal. You are experiencing his grace and mercy even as we speak. Friends, loved ones, and acquaintances that you once rubbed shoulders with are no longer here. But God spared your very life. You are still in the land of the dying, trying to make your way to the land of the living. You've even heard of his mighty acts, how he puts food on tables, how he heals the sick bodies, how he opened up blinded eyes. You've heard how he opened up and parted the Red Sea, how he raised the dead, but yet you still haven't given him your life. Mm -mm -mm. You still haven't surrendered and submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I'm talking to you this morning. What you gonna do? I'm talking to someone else as well. You are acquainted with the Christian faith. You know Jesus. But you're walking and following him from a distance. You're walking and following from afar off. You are not consistent in your faith. You don't pray like you should. You don't study like you should. You don't tithe like you should. Or better yet, you don't even tithe at all. You don't fast the way you ought to. Your flesh and the old man are having their way with you. I simply ask you today, what you gonna do? You just come out of a whole year of death, devastation, and disaster. But God spared your life. What you gonna do? Are you going to commit your life to Christ and serve him the balance of your days? Are you going to turn from your sin and then turn to Jesus? Or will you continue down the road of sin? What you gonna do? The proverbial ball is in your court. God is too much of a gentleman to make you do anything. As a matter of fact, he doesn't get glory out of forcing you to serve him. He gets glory out of making out of you making a choice to live for him. After all, he didn't make you a robot. You are a free will, moral agent. You have the power to choose. And it has to be your choice of your own volition. People in heaven chose to be in heaven. They want to go to heaven. My question to you this morning is, what you gonna do? Moses writes Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy takes place entirely in one location 
over about a month long time. Israel was camped in the central rift valley of the east of the Jordan River. Moses called the second generation of Israelites to trust the Lord and to be obedient to the covenant made at Mount Sinai. And most importantly, Moses called the people to take the land that God had promised by oath to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The book of Deuteronomy, along with the book of Psalm and Isaiah, reveals much about the attributes of God. The Lord is the only God. He's a jealous God. He's a faithful God. He's the loving God. He's the merciful God, but yet he's angered by sin. What you gonna do? Let me let me offer at least three points on what you should do. And if you're open to it, this is gonna bless you real good. Number one, what you gonna do? Number one, you should choose the right options. Choose the right options. Look at verse 15. See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. That's options. What you gonna do? Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death and blessing and cursings. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. That's options to me. Life, good, death, evil, blessings, cursings. That's options. But God gives you the best option. He says, choose life. Deuteronomy 11, verse 26 through 28 said this, Behold, I have set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. A curse if you will not Obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods which you have not known. Look at your options. Life and good, death and evil, blessings and cursings. Those are options. What you gonna do? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 gives us a whole exhaustive list of God's blessings and God's cursings. He says, if you hearken diligent to my voice, to obey my voice, all these blessings shall come upon you and the Lord shall set thee on high and make you the head not the tail, above only not beneath, blessed in the city and blessed in the field, and so on and so forth. You'll be the lender, not the borrower. And so on and so forth. But he also gives you in Deuteronomy 28 a whole exhaustive list of cursings. Just look at your options. Good or evil. The devil or Jesus. Heaven or hell. Those are options. But the Lord doesn't force any of these things on you. You have the power to choose what you're going to do. Weigh out your options and the Lord wants you to choose life. What you're going to do. So number one, what you're going to do, choose the right options. Number two, choose to obey. Because I learned a long time ago. And in scripture. Obedience is better than sacrifice. 
God rewards obedience. Listen to his voice and obey his voice. That's how God gets glory out of your life. Listening to his voice and obeying his voice. Look at verse 16. And I command you this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou may live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou go to possess it. Verse 17. But if thine heart turn away, so thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land where thou go to possess Jordan to go to possess it. So the choice is yours to obey or to disobey. But if you disobey, you shorten your life on this earth, you don't prolong your days. You're not going to be fruitful. You're going to be stagnant because you're hard-hearted and disobedient. Choose to obey. Now, let me say this. Keeping the law won't save you. Keeping the law won't save you. Only Jesus saves. But when you obey his word, you set yourself up to be blessed and highly favored. Now, these Israelites, when they came out of Egypt, they were doing what was right in their own eyes. Whatever they thought was right to them, that's what they done. But the Lord now is bringing them into a land, a new land, a promised land, land flowing of milk and honey, and he's giving them statutes and laws and word to govern their life so to be order in the land that the land won't be defiled and the land will flow with milk and honey. And so the word of God is meant to be obeyed. There's blessings that come when you obey God's word. Listen to what Jesus said in John 15, verse 14. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. John 8, 31, the B clause. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. James, the half-brother Jesus, listen to what he said in James 1, 22. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And so that's because the word won't, that's because the law won't save you. The law can be a blessing to your life, and you can walk in a wealthy place because you obey, and you listen, and you act it on God's word. You chose to obey. And so, my brothers and sisters, number one, choose the right options. Number two, choose to obey. And once you do that, number three, you get the overflow. You get the overflow. Deuteronomy 6 and 2. And that thy days may be prolonged. I, I don't know of anyone, not to my knowledge, that doesn't want to live a long time here and enjoy the blessings of the Lord, enjoy the fruit of the land. I don't know about you, but I, I want to live a long time. And so, when you get the overflow, part of the overflow is that your days are prolonged on earth. And then Deuteronomy 6 and 3, observe to do that it may be well with thee and that you may increase mightily as the Lord God of our fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. It's a fruitful land. And the overflow for the Jews in that day was the promised land, the land of Canaan, 
or the land flowing with milk and honey. But let me just tell you this. Geography doesn't confine the Lord. Wherever you are, if you obey his voice, you can experience the overflow. So you don't have to be in a literal promised land or land of Canaan. Wherever you are, if you obey God's voice, you can experience the overflow. Listen to some of the overflow. Luke 6, 38, give, and it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure you meet with them, shall be measured to you again. That's overflow, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's overflow. Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. That's overflow. That's overflow. And so, what you gonna do? The ball's in your court. You, you heard message after message. You heard preach after preacher. This Mormon of God, this man of God prayed for you, shared a word with you. God spared your life, brought you through 2020, delivered you to 2021. The ball's in your court. What you gonna do? Choose the right option. Choose to obey. Number three, that you get the overflow. Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise. Well, the Lord woke you up this morning and set a choice before you. Death and life, Satan or Jesus, heaven or hell, what you gonna do? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The choice is yours. The ball's in your court. It's your choice what you're going to do. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is the lamp unto our feet and the light to our pathway. You sent your word to heal us. And God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for every promise in your word, every exhortation to obey your voice and to submit to your will. God, I'm praying for somebody that's across these airways that have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray you move on their heart today. Bring conviction over them right now. Give them the power to choose life and death. Jesus over Satan and blessing over cursing. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's let's go into the Lord's Supper, if you would. Let's pray again. Father, we thank you again for your word as we are about to partake of the Lord's Supper. We ask that you would wash us in the blood. We have examined ourselves and some didn't even examine the Lord's body the right way and they're sick and some even did. So we are examining ourselves, our lives, and we have fallen short of your word. We ask you by your grace and mercy to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bless uh, the loved ones across the airways or body of Christ at large as we partake of the Lord's Supper as we remember what you've done for us over 2,000 years ago, how you died for our sins, you were buried and you rose again the third day. Uh, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, we, we hold in our hands what is symbolic of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ.
he tells us often as we do this, we show his death till he come again. So we take and we eat together. Likewise, we take the cup, which is symbolic of his blood, and without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. We take together and we drink. Amen. Well, thank you for viewing the Fresh Bread broadcast uh, via Facebook and YouTube. We pray that this message bless you this morning for some ways to continue to support this ministry. Uh, you can go to the Gear Plus mobile app. You can go to the Facebook e-service payment link or you can choose to go to the U.S. Peace, uh, United States Postal Service. And but however you choose to give this morning, we are appreciating praying God's choice blessings to be on your life as you faithfully give, God will in turn faithfully give back to you. Well, that's my time. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you wherever you go, both now, henceforth, and forever. Amen. Peace. Mm -hmm.